In this video, we're going to look at spin orbit coupling, or the coupling between orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum. So, we had some magnetic moment that we previously looked at for some spin angular momentum L, which was equal to minus the charge of the electron over two times the mass of the electron times the angular momentum vector, it gave us some magnetic dipole moment. And the operator for total angular momentum squared acting on some wave function psi nl m sub l equals h bar squared l times l plus 1 times the wave function back. So it gives us these distinct eigenvalues of h bar squared l times l plus 1. And <clears throat> knowing that, we have a quantization for what the values of this angular momentum vector can be. So our values for that magnetic moment came out to be minus e h bar over 2 mass of the electron times the square root of l times l plus 1 with this being the angular momentum squared so taking the square root of that eigenvalue gives you the uh, magnitude of the angular momentum and so this is just equal to the negative Bohr magneton times the eigenvalue for angular momentum which the Bohr magneton being uh, these physical constants that we see here and we can do a same, uh, similar sort of thing for spin angular momentum. We can define a spin angular momentum uh, magnetic moment, which would be equal to minus g m e, or sorry, g times e over two m e times the spin angular momentum vector s. Uh, this g is just being a factor of 2, which comes out of some uh, weird things in relativistic quantum mechanics, but that's not the point of this video, so we're going to keep moving on. So for this spin angular momentum, we have m sub s equals, analogously to this, minus g times the Bohr magneton times the spin angular momentum eigenvalue, s times s plus 1. Uh, square root and we can define a similar thing for the z component of the spin angular momentum making that equal to minus this g which is 2 times e times the z component of the spin angular momentum over 2 times mass of the electron which we then know is equal to minus GE and the eigenvalues for the Z component of the angular momentum are going to be H bar times M sub S the either plus half plus one half or minus one half for the angular momentum quantum number in the Z direction the orbit the spin angular momentum quantum number over two times the mass of the electron and then we can factor this using the value of the Bohr magneton into minus g m sub s times the Bohr magneton. But then we also know that the spin angular momentum quantum number m sub s can take on two values. It can either take on plus or minus one half. So this plus or minus so this uh, plus or minus one half times a two here is just going to give us plus or minus one so the final result we get here for the magnetic moment caused by spin angular momentum is going to be plus or minus the Bohr magneton. So whenever we have uh, interactions with magnetic fields or uh, magnetic fields created by angular momentum, we have something caused by the orbital angular momentum, the value of L for a given orbital, sp, df, etc. And then there's some uh, magnetic field created by the spin of the electron. The spin angular momentum creates another uh, magnetic moment. And these two magnetic moments can then interact with each other. And this causes a slight correction to the orbital energies that we were looking at for the hydrogen atom earlier. And we then have a new Hamiltonian where we have our kinetic energy 2Me del squared, our coulombic attraction of the electron to the proton or nucleus, depending on what have you, but just proton in this case, 
plus, and then there will be some term for the interaction of these two magnetic moments times L dot S. So there's this complicated function for how these two uh, ang orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum operators interact and how you get coupling between spin the spin angular momentum and orbital angular, angular momentum. And we're not going to look at, into that uh, too much in detail for as far as quantitatively what that means, but this would be called the spin orbit interaction term. So that's a perturbation to the Hamiltonian. And when you have this term in the Hamiltonian, you can't solve the hydrogen atom exactly anymore, and you have to solve it by, uh, by a technique called perturbation theory, which we'll learn a couple uh, videos down the road. But what, what ends up becoming the critical quantity now is not either the orbital angular momentum L or the spin angular momentum S. It's actually a combination of the two, which is going to be called J. So we're going to have this new uh, J, and we're going to have some operators based on J, which are going to function just like these operators for the other two types of angular momentum. When you solve this uh, for a spin orbit coupled uh, hydrogen atom, what you're going to have are quantum numbers for this total angular momentum J and component of it m sub j, component along a z axis, and acting on it that with the j squared operator is going to, as you might expect, give h bar squared j times j plus 1 times the original function back in this type of uuh, notation here, Dirac notation. Then we have an operator along the z axis, j sub z which gives us the value of the second quantum uh, number for this, which is going to be h bar m sub j times the state j m sub j. So these two operators work just like L squared and LZ, just like S squared and SC, but it just comes out of how the Hamiltonian works for a spin orbit coupled hydrogen atom, where you have uh, these two quantities are not uh, unambiguously defined. It's actually their uh, their vector sums j, which are, is going to be the quantity that matters for looking at spin orbit coupling. Okay, so how do these two things add together? Well, we have m sub s, which can equal plus or minus one half, not two, one half, which gives us two states. For a given value of L, we're going to have 2L plus 1 states. So for a given value of J, we are going to have um, this 2 times 2L plus 1 states. Okay, so we can look at some values of j that are possible when we are when we look at it in this framework so the possible values of j are going to be two possibilities it's either going to be l plus uh, s with s being one half remind ourselves that s is one half the eigenvalue for spin total spin angular momentum is one half or it can be the absolute magnitude of l minus s so this is going to be different whether we're in an S, P, D, or F orbital, etc. So let's look at some specific cases of that to see what we're going to get. Oh, and also mention that M sub J can be uh, just like M sub L for L. It can be J, J minus 1, J minus 2, dot, 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 all the way down to minus J. Okay. So if we have the case where we have, let's say, L equals 0 in S orbital, then we're going to have J equals 1 half, because J 0 plus 1 half is 1 half. 
0 minus 1 half absolute magnitude is 1 half. So the only value of j for, a, for an s orbital is 1 half. And this gives values of m sub j of plus 1 half and minus 1 half. If we then had a p orbital, l equals 1, we would get two possible values of j. We would get three halves and one half. And then for three halves, we get four states from that. Three halves, one half, minus one half, minus three halves, as these equations suggest. And for the one half state, we just get plus one half and minus one half. So you see for l equals zero, we get two states. For l equals one, we get six states. And then the last one we'll look at is l equals two, a d orbital, where you can have five halves or three halves for your values of j. And then that's going to give you six possible values going all the way from five halves to minus five halves and every half integer in between. And similarly for three halves, you go from three halves to minus three halves, every half integer in between one half and minus one half as well. So this is how uh, spin orbit coupling affects uh, a hydrogen atom in terms of the values of angular momentum we have. We end up with this uh, operator J, which gives us these quantum numbers J and M sub J. And here are the possible values you get depending on which type of orbital you're in, S, P, D, etc. And you get uh, quite a few states possible for these two quantum numbers, and we're going to look at how this affects the spectrum of a hydrogen atom.